Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, today I'm gonna to talk about some fun stuff, right? So we've had our Tesla Model Y for over a year. Uh, we've got over 10,000 miles on it, in fact, closer to 12 or 13,000 miles at this point. Absolutely love the car, love the driving experience. In fact, it was a driving experience I've never seen with any other vehicle before this. There's a zero to 60 with a Tesla that you just don't find in any other car. It's super fast, even without the performance. We have the long range edition, and it just makes it that much more fun to drive. Now, I don't go out there and race, race people or anything like that. I drive around my family, so I'm driving responsibly or as responsibly as I can anyway. However, it's just an enjoyable ride. And when you're not in the car, when you're driving your other vehicle, if you have another one, you just notice the difference. You notice the acceleration just isn't there. The driving excitement just isn't there. And in fact, you go, it brings you to miss your Tesla a little bit. So that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. Kind of. We're gonna be talking about 10 things that maybe you didn't know about Teslas before you ended up buying one or before you ended up going down this, this electric evolution road. So sit back, relax, you guys are watching The Tall Tesla Guy. So first and foremost, we're gonna start off with full self-driving, right? So the car comes with what's called autopilot. Autopilot will do your basic kind of lane assist, prevent you from hitting the car in front of you, keep the speed that you put in there, and basically like an adaptive cruise control. However, what it'll also do is actually steer for you, right? So it's gonna move within the lanes, it's gonna to try to find a lane for you if it doesn't see one. It's really designed for highway driving, but I've noticed one thing with it versus other cars that I've had that have autopilot, or at least cruise control, is that it allows you to kind of relax a little bit. I never stop focusing on the road and autopilot by no means is autonomous driving. However, you can just kind of drop the shoulders a little bit, keep your hands on the steering wheel, keep your eyes on the road, but it just kind of lets you mentally kind of decompress, which is super nice. Now, the next step up from that offered occasionally is an enhanced autopilot. What enhanced autopilot does is actually change lanes for you. It'll overtake slow cars. It'll navigate you towards where you want to go. It's also got a drive on city streets beta, so it'll stop at stop signs, red lights, that sort of thing. But, you know, even the basic autopilot will do some stuff that other cars just won't. So it kind of adds to the excitement of the car, adds to what Teslas can do, and it adds to, uh, you know, kind of the driving experience. Uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is some of the entertainment features in the car. Now, it's not, um, you know, a surprise when you have an electric vehicle that you have to charge it. Well, Tesla has a super extensive supercharger network, which we'll talk about in a minute here. But what you have to do with the supercharger is you basically plug in and you're waiting anywhere from 10 minutes to 25 minutes, say, to charge up your vehicle. What do you do when you're sitting there? Is you sit in the car and you take advantage of some of the entertainment features, like games. There's tons of games in there. You can also watch YouTube on there. Recently, you can watch Disney Plus in there. You can watch Hulu, uh, Netflix, just to name a few. And they're adding more and more stuff as they move forward. And they really designed the car. Now, the Tesla as a company is basically a technology company that actually sells a car. So the advantages to that is you get these over there updates, which we'll talk about in a minute as well, that kind of add all these new features to the car. New almost every time you get an update is super nice. It's nice to have all that stuff in there and it's a great way to pass the time. So that was really my, uh, my second thing, but I can even put it as number one because it's a super neat feature and it's a lot of fun to do. And when they get to the point where it's full self-driving, if they ever get there, where it's actually autonomous driving, it'll be nice to have something to do while you're sitting in the car. Uh, number three is actually something that um, Kind of came out recently. Elon's been talking about it with the Model S, Model X, but they just recently put it in with the Model Y and the Model 3. In fact, the new release of the Model Y anyway has it. It's a bioweapon defense mode. It sounds a lot more scientific than it actually is, but it's basically two HEPA air filters that allow you to kind of block the cabin off. These two HEPA filters that they have in the car actually kind of scrub and clean the air for you. So you can completely block off any exterior air contaminants. Going through a car wash, you don't get that soapy smell. Driving by an area that there is a skunk, you don't smell the skunk, stuff like that. But it's super neat and he designed it to completely enclose the cabin and give you fresh clean air while you're driving around. Helps with allergies, my wife has pretty bad allergies. Helps with allergies, it helps driving through areas where you have smog. Probably designed for LA and LA traffic, but you can use it anywhere. It just kind of really helps give you some nice clean air, which is super nice. And it's a super nice feature of the car. And better yet, it came with this over there update. And then they also added to have a filter with the new design. So if you get a Tesla Model Y, 3, S or X at this point forward, you're always going to have that bioweapon defense mode. Number four is kind of a addition to number two, right? So all the features, all the technology that the car has, in addition to just what you can do, like the games and stuff, when you stop, 
is it's got all these settings for the seats. It's got all these settings for the cabin air, you know, air conditioning, the airflow, everything like that. He did as best he could to completely get rid of knobs and dials. In fact, if you get a new Model S or X, you're going to notice that with the yoke steering wheel, you completely remove the stocks, the gear shifters. Everything is a hepatic, uh, hepatic touch button on the front of the steering wheel, even the horn, which is kind of neat. Now, people talk about it every once in a while, say, hey, I hate that I have to go through two screens to get to the glove box to open it up. But in reality, I don't open the glove box enough to really bother me, I guess. So it wasn't, it was something I got super used to in the beginning. And then now it pops up on the screen. When you go to the settings of the car, glove box is right there. You push it, it opens, or you can even tell the car to open it for you. Just say open glove box and they'll do just the same. Yes, it's not as convenient as just pulling the knob and opening it, but my wife is the one that's typically eating glove box. It doesn't seem to bother her. So it's something that we got in, got it, you know, got past super quick. And it's one of those things with the car that you notice, like getting into the car using your phone or a key card instead of an actual key. It was odd at first, but I always have my phone, never have an issue with charging because it's got a wireless charging mat inside the car anyway. So the technology of the vehicle is just you know, way above and beyond any other vehicle that I've ever seen. And as far as I know, any other vehicle that's out there. So, you know, super nice to have that technology feature. But again, Tesla is basically a technology company that makes a car. So it makes sense that it would have that sort of stuff. And then over there, updates. We talked about that a little bit with adding Netflix, adding uh, Hulu, adding Disney Plus. It came with an over there update. Well, Tesla can do these over there updates. And it just, you plug in, you get an update, it takes about 20 minutes, and then it's like having a new car. And through that kind of technology or through that kind of technological advance, Tesla is able to add new stuff without having to bring it in to get it serviced, without having to take time out of your day to do that kind of stuff. In fact, you can do it at night while it's charging. So over there, updates are a huge thing for me too, but the technology in general, way leaps and bounds above any other vehicle that I've ever driven. And like I said, any other vehicle that I know that's out there. When you have technology, a lot of times the technology companies, the technology people will put an Easter egg. So the Easter eggs with the Tesla are, are super fun too. You say my butt is freezing, it'll turn on the seat heaters. Uh, pushing the charging button on your charging cable 10 times, it'll go into this rainbow mode. It'll show you all the colors that it can possibly show on there. Uh, hitting the stock down four times, puts you in autopilot and sends you down rainbow road. Plays Don't Fear the Reaper for you. Uh, positives and negatives there. If you do it accidentally, it does it and there's no way to stop it. However, it's a fun thing to do, a fun gimmicky thing. The newer ones have a, bo a boom box feature too. So you can hit the horn and it'll actually play a song for you instead. So things like that are just fun things. Fun things they put in the car to let you know that they have a sense of humor. It's always nice to have it in there. Similarly to, um, you know, Elon selling his car for 69,420. Uh, that was the model last a couple of years ago. It was kind of a fun price that he put in there just to say, hey, yeah, I've got a sense of humor, um, you know, or that I'm a 15 year old person. But nonetheless, it's kind of fun things to have. The Easter egg things are kind of fun, kitschy things to show, to show off to people so people can see it and to put a smile on people's faces. And I always enjoy that too. A lot of times when I'm making videos, I'm just trying to make people smile. So I appreciate that that stuff is in there. And I appreciate that it's not as dry as it could be uh, when you're talking about a car. So one of the, the fun things about the car being the Easter eggs. So jumping into uh, kind of a number six, number seven for me is really the Sentry Mode dash cam, right? The dash cam is automatically running and it automatically saves in kind of a 10 minute loop while you're driving the vehicle. You know, a dramatic driving incident that happens, jerking the wheel, slamming on the brake, that sort of thing, it automatically saves the clip for you now, which is super nice. You just have to hit the horn to get it. And then certainly if you're involved in any sort of accident, it saves the clips, but it also does sentry mode too. So six, seven, like I was saying, sentry mode, when you have the car parked and locked, it'll activate sentry mode if you want. It's gonna automatically activate for you, save the footage anytime somebody gets near your car, certainly if somebody hits your car, door dings it, whatever, but it's a nice feature to have. And it's something that comes with every Tesla. So you don't even have to think about it. I don't even have to worry about it. You get that um, USB drive in there or the SSD drive and you're off and you're good to go. So it's super nice. Sentry mode and dash cam footage automatically storing is an amazing feature of the car. And it's something that I enjoy every time we have it. It gives you kind of a sense of mind with it a little bit. You know, with that, you also get, um, there's eight cameras and 10 sensors or 10 cameras and five sensors around the car that show you kind of all around it. In fact, Elon talked about doing a bird's eye view. You know, it gives you kind of a 360 view of the car when you're backing up, pulling into spaces. And what it does is use those cameras that are completely surrounding the car, in addition to the radar or Tesla vision, depending on which model you have, to give you, uh, or to give the car an experience to avoid hitting stuff, which is always nice. But it's neat that it's there. It's neat that it has all that kind of stuff and it comes with the car. 
You don't have to do anything to get them. You don't have to do anything to access them. Just click the button, you're good to go. And I touched on this a little bit, but I always add it to my list and I add it to the, to the list later on because we also have a gas vehicle. And one of the things I hate about the gas vehicle is putting that big clunky key in my pocket. I hate having stuff in my pockets anyway. So I love the fact that I can access and enter and drive my car with my phone. I ne in fact, I keep the key card in there just in case we use like valet or something like that, but I never use it. And the entire time I've had the car over a year, I've never taken that key card out to drive. It's always been on my phone. I uh, always have my phone with me, so it's never a problem anyway, but it's super neat that you can access the car and drive with just your phone. You can also set uh, basically a valet mode or you can set a key pin to drive. They wouldn't have the pin, they wouldn't be able to drive. So it's a super nice thing to have, but it's kind of neat technology to be able to uh, lock it down like that. And it's nice to be able to access and drive without having to carry a clunky key. So I definitely love that part of it. And then number 10 on my list, you know, caps everything off is the dog mode. It seems like a silly thing. And if, certainly if you don't have a dog, it's not going to do anything for you. But in my case, we have a big kind of larger than life golden retriever. He fits perfectly in the back of the car. I've shown him in a couple of videos. His name is Ben, but um, fits great back there. And you know, one of the reasons why we got the Model Y versus the Model 3 is so we could put our dog back there. In fact, there's dog mode with the car. So you pull into a grocery store, you pull into a place where you're stopped, the dog's in the car, you can set dog mode, it'll lock the doors for you, set the temperature, whatever you want, in our case, 70 degrees, say. It'll keep the cabin temperature at 70 degrees, keep him warm and cozy, even play music for you. And it also, on the screen, lets everybody know this car is in dog mode, this dog is happy, here's the temperature. You know, that was just kind of a list of everything I was thinking about. I mean, of course, you can't do a top 10 list without talking about the supercharger network, but you guys know all about that, right? One of the reasons why you get a Tesla outside of the driving excitement, the fun, the styling of it, the great company, everything like that, is the fact that it's got a supercharging network. It'll quickly charge your car when you're on the road. You know, going on a road trip in a Tesla with the supercharger network is so much easier and faster than any other electric vehicle out there. So, I mean, you can't go without saying that one, but I wanted to cap it off with a dog mode just to add something fun to it. So, you know, either way, I hope you guys really enjoyed watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos and that you're having a great week, kind of month so far, and you were able to kind of enjoy yourself a little bit. So, you know, really appreciate you guys, and I hope you guys are staying safe out there. Thanks for watching, everybody.